So I had a really hard time figuring out what to play for this painting, but when I saw it, I had to include it. I mean, look at it. It's amazing. And I looked at it and I looked at it. I thought, oh, red and gold, right. You know, maybe it's Asian. Asians like red and gold. I'm Asian. Maybe, maybe a Chinese melody. Uh, no. Well, maybe, maybe something somber. No, I just couldn't figure it out. But it dawned on me that the reddish hue of the background made me think of a song that I had picked up and put down and picked up and put down over a long time. And it was written in honor of my friend's uh, nail polish. <laughs> <laughs> and it's called Painted Toes. <laughs> and I realized when I looked at the stormy scene that the reason I thought of this scene was because I could see the God's feet stamping all over the mountaintops, right? <laughs> and making the sparks fly in the, you know. And I have Dennis to thank because I could not finish this piece. This piece, I added little bits over the course of like 10 years, but it felt incomplete. And when I realized that that was what was happening, these gods were like stamping all over mountaintops and creating a storm, then I had the, the end of the song. And I think that I had said these words to Dennis, you know, it's creative contamination, right? <laughs> like I'm affecting him and he's affecting me and I don't know, stuff is happening, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's see whether I can figure it out because it's a more recent kind of figure out, right?
so then how do you like follow that song, right? <laughs> well, I needed a rest. So I put this sort of more restful, quiet, gray, peaceful painting in Stanley Park up. And I thought, what am I going to do now? Well, this song I'm going to play is Scarborough Fair. And it is not one that I wrote or arranged or anything. It was written and arranged by an, an Israeli harpist named Sunita Stainslow. And one thing that came to mind was that I was at a workshop Sunita was giving, and she said that she did not like to listen to people playing her music. You know, she played her music and she did her thing and she did not ever listen to anyone trying to play her music. <laughs> and when I was younger, I couldn't understand that. I thought, you know, music, you, you always say it's creative, but you know, when you do Royal Conservatory music, you get given these pieces to play on the piano and you're told to play them, you're told how to play them and then you go and you play them and then you're marked if you don't play them well. Um, and it seemed very prescriptive, which it can still be. Like when you're in an orchestra, you don't do your own thing. You do what the conductor says, because he can actually fire you. I, I, I don't know about musicians' unions and stuff, but, but you know, I mean, um, there, there, there's something that has to be said for teamwork, but there's no creativity in that. It, the creativity is the conductor's hands. So it took me a long time to realize that the reason Sunita didn't like listening to her own stuff is because if you actually do play music and not just because it's been prescribed by your teacher or an examination, there's an element of interpretation. You put your own interpretation on someone else's music. And it took me, you know, a really long time to understand that. And I'm embarrassed to like have to tell people that, but I didn't know what else to say, so I was gonna to, like make it true confessions, right? <laughs> so here we are, Scarborough Fair. Thank you. 